Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how you can stream using your Olympus camera together with OBS Studio software. And I'll go through all of the hardware you need, the connections you'll need to make, as well as give you some tips on lighting and sound, and how to green screen, and how to set up your camera and the software so that everything works smoothly. All right, so the first thing you'll need is your Olympus camera. And I'll be using the EM10 Mark II with the 14 to 42 kit lens for the demonstration. But really, any camera that has an HDMI output will work. And then you'll need a micro HDMI to full HDMI cable. So the one end on, will have a micro HDMI connection that goes to your uh, camera. And then the other end will be the full HDMI connection that will go into the HDMI to USB capture card. And the one I'm showing here is the Elgato HD60S. It comes very highly recommended. Uh, it's not the one that I use because I bought mine like a year ago and I don't think they make it anymore. But this one here, a lot of people use with success is the Elgato HD60S. Uh, but if you're shopping for these, because these are hard to find now, right? Uh, make sure you find one that says HDMI to USB capture card that is streaming capable because it can be very confusing when you're shopping for these if you just search for HDMI to USB. Uh, some, some cards are strictly for outputting your computer screen to a different monitor through the USB port. That's not what you want. Some of them are HDMI to USB for recording only. Uh, so you need to make sure that your HDMI to USB capture card will also stream. I also highly recommend getting a USB microphone uh, because I've tried using the microphone jack with a mic into the computer directly uh, and the quality is really bad and it's very hard to get decent sound out of it. Uh, I've also tried like the, the Bluetooth uh, microphones and things that people use with their phones sometimes and um, I ran into lip syncing issues. So the best way to go really is uh, for good quality sound is using a USB microphone. And I'll have a link down below to all of these things uh, so you can look at them for yourself, uh, the ones that I recommend. Uh, and that microphone that I'm recommending is the one I'm using right now actually and I've used for all of my streams. And then finally you'll need your computer and this can be a, a Apple or Windows. Um, it doesn't matter. The important thing is you need to download the OBS Studio software, and it's a free software together with, um, I think it's called the uh, uh, Virtual Cam, OBS Virtual Cam software. So uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but uh, that's the basic setup. Then I also highly recommend you also get some sort of good lighting kit because um, it's, you're not always going to be streaming next to a window with a lot of light because, you know, a lot of people, that's how they do that. But you know, I'm in a small room here and I need lots of good lighting and the little ceiling light in the room is not bright enough. So uh, get get some good studio lighting uh, together with a green screen so you can add some effects kind of like I'm doing now with this presentation where I'm just like in the corner or, you know, I can add different images and things to the background and do presentations, etc. when you have a green screen. And it's not hard. I'll show you how to do it. Uh, and this kit here is the exact one that I use and it's very affordable. So uh, again, I'll have a link to that down below as well. All right, so let me show you how this all looks in real life. Uh, here's the EM10 Mark II. And I have it mounted actually on one of these uh, mini tripods. Well, it's not a tripod, but it's like a little stand that you can get and uh, I like this one, uh, but sometimes, you know, you can just use one of these little pixie tripods or, you know, when I actually I started streaming, I used to just rest my uh, camera here on the uh, desk here. However, I, you know, I wanted to get the camera up to kind of eye level. So if you can, when you mount your or place your camera, try to place it sort of eye level. So it's pointing right, right at your nose or the center of your face. Uh, just to kind of get the least distortion. Uh, and then this is connected uh, via the HDMI cable. So here's the micro HDMI cable plugged into the camera. And this comes all the way around to uh, my HDMI capture card here. So here's where the full HDMI part plugs into the capture card. And then I have 
the USB out going directly into the computer. And, and that's an important point that you want to make sure that you plug your HDMI capture card directly into the computer and not through, say, like a USB hub or something like that because then you'll get a bad connection. Uh, so always connect the HDMI capture card directly to the USB port on your computer. Uh, the microphone and things like that, your keyboard can go through a hub, it's fine. Uh, and this is the microphone that I'm using. It's the same one I showed you in the diagram. It's a, it's a Fifine USB microphone. I just got the one that came with this arm because, you know, it, it saves me a little desk space. I don't have a lot of desk space here. Uh, but this also comes with a desk stand as well. If you just want to, you know, just use it on your desk. Because actually when I use this microphone, uh, during the streams, I have it down pretty low so it's out of the view of the camera. Uh, so a desktop stand would work if you have plenty of room. And as you can see, I have my lighting kit here behind me, and I have another one right here. And then uh, right here, I have the green screen behind me. And as you can see, it's just, you know, mounted on these poles here, like so. And this, this is all included with the kit. I think it's about a $90 kit. So it's not too expensive and you can use this for photography as well, right? And then last but not least, I have this little desk lamp here with the bendy arm that I bought at Walmart for about, I don't know, I think it was like $8. But I use this for additional lighting just directly onto my face. So when you set up your lighting, have it, you know, just have the two umbrellas on either side of you. Maybe have one more center light here and then of course I have the light uh, in the ceiling to kind of give me a little rim lighting on top. So before we attach the camera to the HDMI capture card, uh, let me show you the basic settings on the M10 Mark II. So I just put the camera into movie mode on the mode dial, and then we turn the camera on, and I go into the live control panel, so I click the OK button, and uh, I turn on face detect to that, the microphone doesn't matter. I turn image stabilization off because we'll be on this little tripod stand. And I use natural color profile, auto white balance, uh, shutter mode doesn't matter, continuous AF, uh, and program mode. And then, this is important, I put the camera into full HD mode, which is 1920 by 1080, uh, fine. And then I make sure that I'm on 30p. So some, some capture cards are a little finicky like mine, I assume. Uh, so it only works when I have this in 30p. And, uh, but you can change that by clicking the info button and changing this to whatever you want. But I found 30p works best. Uh, and that's it. And then auto ISO. And uh, I let the camera handle the exposure and everything. Now sometimes when you have uh, constant lighting like I do here with the uh, studio kit I bought, I will fix the white balance to the color temperature of the bulbs that I have on the artificial lighting. So let's see, where is that? Uh, here. So instead of white balance auto, I will go to custom white balance like so, and I'll select by clicking the info button the correct temperature to match the bulbs. Now the bulbs that I have in this kit are 5500K. I just set it to 5400K, so it's just a tad bit warmer, but you can adjust it cooler or warmer. But honestly, you know, the auto white balance works pretty good. Just sometimes the green screen behind me, since the camera doesn't see the, the image on the green screen, the, the auto white balance is a little bit off because it's picking up too much green. But, uh, you know, you can experiment with the white balance a little bit, but I prefer to use a uh, fixed white balance or custom white balance, but you can do auto just to start to see the results you get. And especially if you're not using a green screen, it doesn't matter. And then the last thing I do is I go into the setup menu and I turn the monitor brightness all the way down to minus seven because the default is, you know, zero. So I turn this all the way down to minus seven so I can get the maximum battery life while I'm streaming because I believe the screen stays on while you're streaming. 
So what you need to do, by lowering the brightness down, you save battery life. And I typically get out of a fresh, original Olympus battery at least an hour, sometimes two hours of stream time out of the EM10 Mark II. And on my EM10, or EM1 Mark II and Mark III, I typically get three to three and a half hours of constant streaming. Uh, but the settings are just a tiny bit different. Everything's the same except for this one thing. And let me show you what that is. So this is my EM10 Mark II. The only thing different is I'll go into the movie menu and scroll down to HDMI output and change this to record mode because there's two modes here, monitor mode and record mode. And record mode will give you a nice clean HDMI out signal to your uh, capture card, so, meaning all of these icons and everything are not gonna be in the display. But I'll show you how to do this with the M10 Mark II because the M10 Mark II does not have that selection in the menu, but you can get to it and I'll show you that uh, when we get to that part. All right, so go to the obsproject.com website, then go to the download page, which is where I'm at now, and you can select your operating system here. And I'll be using Windows, so I downloaded the download installer and installed it. And after that's installed, you'll need to also install the OBS virtual cam software. And you just click here to download. And I'll have links down below for these. Uh, but if you need to search for it, because sometimes the links change, uh, just search for OBS virtual cam. All right, so I've opened up the OBS Studio software. And I've had this for a while. So I have a bunch of things that you'll see in the audio mixer and you'll see a bunch of things in the scene here. Most likely when you open up OBS Studio software the first time, these boxes will be pretty much blank. So let's go ahead and start from scratch basically. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go up here to tools and run the auto configuration wizard. And this may automatically start the first time you open, but if not, that's where you go in the menu to start the auto, conf uh, auto configuration. And then you want to select Optimize for Streaming, and that recording is secondary. And just click Next. And the default settings will come in here. Use current Full HD, which is 1920 by 1080. And then uh, either 30 or 60, or prefer 60 when possible. And that's all defined. And then uh, if you're going to be doing YouTubing, uh, you can go ahead and get a stream key. And if you click on that, it'll take you to your YouTube channel where you can get the stream key and you would just insert and paste it here. Uh, and then the server, leave that on default. And I like to set my bit rate to 5,000. You know, really it's a little bit higher than you really need, but you know, that's what I've been comfortable with. Uh, and then I click prefer hardware encoding by default. And then we can leave the estimate checkbox off. Now, if you're going to be streaming to other services like Facebook, you can select this and click Facebook Live or uh, what is that? Twitter, Periscope. There's things here I never use, but they're there available. And if you'll be streaming to, say, uh, Zoom or Skype or something like that, uh, these settings won't matter at all. But let's just walk through this. And it's set up everything by default. And these are the settings that I use. And then I just click Apply Settings. Now what we need to do next, and this is actually what you're gonna be seeing in OBS Studio when you open it up for the first time, it's all blank screens. But we need to add a scene, and a scene is basically what's gonna be showing in the live stream. And I have several scenes already set up here because I've been using this software, but for you this would all be empty and you need to add a scene by clicking the plus sign. And we can call it Live Stream Tutorial and hit enter. Now right now the scene is still empty so we need to start adding sources to the scene. So we're going to add our camera, we're going to add our microphone, we could add graphics and pictures like I was doing for the presentation. But let's just start with the EM10 Mark II camera. So we're going to add that as a source. So we're going to go over here to the source window over here and click the plus button. And we're going to actually add a video capture device because we're not attached directly to the camera. We're attached to a HDMI capture card. So we're going to select this one. And we'll call this EM10 Mark II. So we're creating a new source. And as you can see, I have two sources here that are already existing. So I could have selected one of those, 
but I'm just going to create a new one just like you would and click OK. And by default, OBS is going to pick the integrated webcam that's in the laptop as you can see here. So all we have to do is select the correct device here and in my case it's the J5 Capture. On yours it might say Elgato HD60S or it might say CamLink. So whatever capture card you're using, that's the one you want to select in this window. And we're good. And then I just leave everything here as default and I click OK. Now as you can see we got a bunch of icons and everything all around the screen, right? So how do we get a clean HDMI signal out? Well basically you could just click the info button one time and that will eliminate most of it, but not all of it, right? We still have the face detect box. We still have the no card icon. And if the battery was low, we would be seeing a low battery icon. Uh, and someone had recommended, you know, cropping this out because you can kind of do some crops and edits uh, with the source. But to get a clean HDMI signal out of the Olympus EM10 Mark II and some other Olympus cameras, because it's not in the menu system on a lot of their cameras, you need to press and hold the info button. And uh, with my capture card, I have a little issue with that, but let's go ahead and press and hold the info button to get rid of all these extra icons. So I press and held the info button until all the icons went away. But as you can see, uh, the, the image froze. So what I've had to do on my system, the way I'm set up, and this, this may not happen to you, but if it does, I just go in here and I deactivate the source and then I reactivate it. And as you can see, it came back just fine and all of the icons and everything is gone. We have a nice clean HDMI signal. Now the next thing you need to do, and it may look a little choppy because I'm, I'm recording a screen of a recording, so it, it, I'm losing a few frames that way, but this, this won't happen to you hopefully. Um, we need to add sound now because if you look over here, you'll notice that the M10 Mark II is not outputting any sound through the HDMI card or HDMI cable. Uh, so we're going to add our USB microphone. So I'm going to click add and we're going to add an audio input capture and we'll call this the uh, Fifine desktop mic like so or uh, a better name actually is Fifine USB mic and click OK and then we just look for it in the menu and it's a microphone to USB because the Stereo Mix Realtek is the uh, laptop's internal microphone system my J5 capture card has its own microphone input which I'm not using so the only one left here is the USB PNP audio device. And that's, that's how the FeeFine microphone shows up in this list. So I click on that and I can ignore that little timestamp checkbox. And now you can see we've added another audio source here in the audio mixer box. And when you talk, you really want your voice to peak right in this yellow area because when it starts hitting the red area, typically your voice will start getting kind of messy, right? It'll start clipping. So what I like to do normally is I back this off to about a minus two or 2.1 because, you know, sometimes when you're streaming, you start talking louder and you don't realize it and then your voice will start clipping. Uh, so I like to just turn this down, but adjust it to whatever is appropriate level for you. And if it's if it's too low, sometimes I have this cranked all the way up to, you know, zero and uh, I'm still not getting enough volume. Then you have to go into your uh, microphone settings on your PC and make sure that's turned on. So I'll just show you where that is on mine. I just go down here to headphones. I right click open sound settings. And then this is my input device is the PNP and I click on manage or I'm sorry, I click on device properties. And I just make sure that this is all the way up to about 88 or 90, right in here in this level. Because for some reason, sometimes after a Windows update, this gets reset down to like 30. I don't know why. <laughs> now, the other thing you'll notice is that I have a green screen behind me. Uh, and it's very easy to activate that. So all I have to do is 
go into the EM10 Mark II, and I actually I right click it like so. And then I'm going to select filters. And I'm going to add an effect filter. And if you don't have a green screen, you don't need to worry about this. But we're going to add a chroma key. And we'll just click OK and click OK or click close. And all these default settings are fine. You can kind of tweak these a little bit if you're getting some uh, artifacts in your green screen. But now we're all set up. And uh, at this point, I can add, say, a picture, right, to the background. So how do you do that? Well, let's add another source. So we're going to click on the plus, and we're going to add an image. And we'll just call it, uh, I don't know, some Instagram picture that I have. And I can just browse for the image. So I'll go up to my Instagram folder and I'll select some clouds. Oh, let me select this one. This one's pretty nice and click OK. <clears throat> and now the image is covering my face. But all I have to do is drag the Instagram picture to the bottom and now it's behind me. So just think of this as layers. So the top layer, I have the microphone, which is fine. Then I have the EM10. And then on the very bottom of the layer, I have the Instagram picture. Uh, but you'll notice that it's much bigger than, you know, it's not showing the whole picture. So I, I can just resize it. Um, so I right click on it. And I go to transform. And I just do fit to screen like so. And that's pretty good. Sometimes I need to make it a little wider. Like so. You can do it manually. Or you can just do fit to screen. But I, I just want to give you an idea of how you can start adding backgrounds and stuff to really give your uh, streams a little bit of polish, right? All right. Um, now that I have the scene the way that I want it, really all I have to do now is just start streaming by clicking this. And then I'll say, are you sure you want to stream? And I'll say yes. And assuming that I set up the streaming keys for YouTube properly, um, you know, all I have to do is go into YouTube and click go live. <laughs> and if you guys have been watching my streams, sometimes I have a hard time finding that button. But there are tutorials on YouTube on how to stream from OBS Studio to YouTube Live. So check those videos out. I'll try and put a link down below to one if I find a good one. But uh, I had to kind of figure it out on my own from there. And it's, it's, uh, it's a little tricky, but there's lots of good tutorials on it. Now to use OBS with like uh, Skype and Zoom and, you know, the Google Meet and all those types of video conferencing software, you need to use the virtual cam feature of OBS. So you don't need to hit start streaming or start recording. All you have to do actually is go into tools and go into virtual cam. And by default, it's set to auto start and keep aspect ratio, which is fine. If it's, if it's not on auto start, the start button will be lit up here. So make sure it's in start. And as far as target camera, just pick the first one. Uh, that's the one that's set up to go to that. You know, that's the uh, scene that we're looking at now. Uh, but if you have additional cameras, uh, you would select, you know, number two, number three, number four. But we only have one camera hooked up, which is our EM10 Mark II. So we're going to pick the first one and then we can click start if it's not already running. And buffered frames, that's fine at five. And then all we have to do is go into our Skype software and uh, uh, select the OBS camera as the webcam. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, if you want to send that scene that we created in OBS Studio to, say, Skype or Google Meet or, you know, um, Zoom, things like that, you need to go into the settings of that software. So I'm going to give you an example using Skype uh, because it's going to be very similar across all the platforms. You need to select the correct uh, camera to use when you're in your software. So for Skype, I just go into the audio video settings. And by default, it selects the integrated webcam, as you can see. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select not the J5 capture card, but 
but I'm going to select the OBS camera. The reason being is, as you can see, I created a scene and it kept the green screen and everything alive, right? So all of the, if I set up a special scene, this is what people are going to see when I'm using Skype or Zoom or, you know, any of those other sort of live or, uh, you know, uh, communication softwares, right? Like Skype and Google Meet and Zoom. Uh, but I use, I use Skype mainly. So as you can see, OBS is a really powerful software, uh, but the learning curve can be really steep. But hopefully I was able to get you started with the basics of uh, setting up your camera and uh, a green screen and being able to uh, do video conferencing and live stream on YouTube. And there's a lot of tutorials online that you can check out for OBS. There's tons of them and they have a great uh, support form as well. But if you have any questions, I'll do the best I can to answer them in the comments below. Uh, but either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon.